What up, what up, world? It's your boy Decent back again with another Pop Dust exclusive. And my guest at this time is most noted for their work of art known as the Mona Lisa. <laughs> da Vinci I, herself. I think I think I might have mixed up my notes. Um, <laughs> one second. Um, All right. We're, we're gonna roll with it. We're gonna roll with it. We're gonna roll with it. But in all seriousness, my guest at this time is a Philly Femsey. Double entendre, don't ask me how. Currently tearing up the scene, multiple ends of the spectrum, beauty tips with music, just being an overall dope individual. She has a project that's coming out really, really soon called The Lion's Den, August 6th. Ladies and gentlemen, with no further ado, give it up for Ty Nira Da Vinci. Woo! Yeah. Gang, 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 gang. Bang, gang. Bang, gang. Yeah. <laughs> We've actually been following each other for a while on yeah. Instagram, you know, and mm -hmm. I forgot how we, we followed each other, but initially I saw that she was into different things, most notably beauty tips, you know, fashion, things of that nature. You have your own online store where people can purchase things. Yes. You also do hair, you also do nails, you also do makeup, you know, not just your own, but for other people. But the thing that kind of stood out the most was the fact that you made music and naturally you see somebody making music on social media, you're a little bit skeptical. Mm -hmm. But with me, what impressed me so much was the level of dedication that you had. Because you weren't just somebody that was a pretty face that was kind of dabbling mm -hmm. in music. You were somebody that was actually doing it. You know, everything from coming up with treatments for your own videos, putting your own videos together, putting your own photo shoots together, you know, recording yourself. Even down to the point now that you're actually producing yes. your own beats. So. Yes. Tell the people a little bit about your start in music. It just was in me. I grew up in church. I always was just drawn to like the piano and the guitars and the music. Like I was, every time the choir was saying, like I just was so into it. I eventually joined the choir. I was in chorus in middle school, elementary school, dance, tap. I just always was into to the arts. Even in school, I was coloring and doodling, writing, you know, lyrics in mm -hmm. my journal. You know, the, the usual um, artist story of growing up. Um, but I started doing radio. I was like, okay, maybe I'm not that good of a singer because I just try to sing. So I was like, oh, maybe I should just, you know, do radio or whatever. So in uh, college, I started a radio station. I was Miss Freshman in DSU, Miss Freshman. <laughs> and I won the pageant and I started doing the radio station when I moved to, came back to Philly after school. I started to do like internet radio and I did a TV show called Urban Expressions. I don't know if y'all get that in New York, but in Philly, it's a prominent like video show. They used to come on like no cable. If you ain't have cable, that's what you <laughs> channel 48, that's what you had to watch to get the new videos and stuff with Shelly. So, um, you know, I did that for a little bit and then I was like, you know, I think I can rap better than these guys that I'm interviewing. So I did. <laughs> and then I'm here, now I'm here. Can't say that you're a liar. <laughs> A lot of us are guilty of this, even women in particular. They mm -hmm. see a very beautiful woman and automatically assume that it's your run-of-the-mill cookie-cutter stuff that you may get from mm -hmm. somebody that has a lot of sex appeal. But you definitely put a lot of time, effort, and energy into crafting your lyric, crafting your yeah. songs. And once again, that's something that really, really compelled me to want to get to know you through your music mm -hmm. because I saw the level of dedication to each of those things. Yeah. And now that you kind of cultivated this, you know, fan base in a sense do you still feel like you're still going through the motions of kind of navigating between being somebody who can really rap and just being another pretty face i actually have a brain like this is really me behind this i don't have a guy or a manager that's like doing everything for right, me right. behind the scenes it's all me i'm the one that i don't have a manager you're not going to be texting anybody you was texting me exactly. <laughs> we booked this together like i book my own shows um like you said i shoot my videos i edit my videos i'm behind production like so once people see that you have that initiative they fit they automatically are drawn to you because like this is you it's not somebody pitting you in front of us and exactly. forcing you to listen to us this is just your your grind and like people have seen me from like selling mixtapes in the streets like to being here now with that whole story of coming from the streets grinding making a name for yourself Oftentimes that gets lost when you talk about women because mm -hmm. people tend to think that, as you said, they're being placed in front of you. It's like somebody- Cause grabbed. that's what's been happening mm -hmm. for the past few years. It's Absolutely. always been a guy saying, she's hot, 
there yeah. she is. And I won't even let anybody do that. Like, I'm very you don't want protective that over that. Exactly. Because I'm, that becomes a form of validation right. outside of you putting yourself mm-hmm. on. Exactly. Because we've seen that throughout the course of history. Yeah. Like, you know, Jay bought Foxy in. Exactly. You know, Big boy Kim in, you mm-hmm. know, so on and so forth. You know, JD, the brat, like the yep. list just goes yep. on and on and, and on. And I'm not having it. She ain't it's my it. way or the highway. Like, I don't think if a guy came in and started saying, I want you to do this, it's just not going to work. Like, because yeah. it's my vision and I don't want every song to be about how I look. I want to dig a little deeper. Like, I died in my last video. Like, <laughs> I want to dig deeper. I want to I want to play around. I want to be artistic. I want to be free. Like, that's why I started writing music and stuff to be free. So if you come in my lane and try to control it, then I might as well go work not, a nine to five. Yeah, and that, and with a lot of men who usher in a female rapper, they tend to be an extension of the male rapper. Mm-hmm. I think the last thing you want to do is be an extension of somebody else and, in a sense, tell their story as exactly. opposed to being able to tell your story. Right, like, I've been through a lot of stuff, like, and I really wanted to come out in the music, so, yeah, I just, I really want people to dig in that. That's why I do the FMC vlogs, and it's like, I want you to see behind the scenes, like, we was at the TLA, and sound check was an hour late, so I had to rush and do my own makeup. And speaking of your vlog, one of the things that I also appreciate about your hustle and your grind is the fact that you've remained very consistent with the blog. You started in what, 2013, I think? Yes. And mm-hmm. pretty much the quality, of course, improves the more yeah. you do something. And not just so much the quality, but the journeys and the stories that you're telling with the blog that got a little bit more extensive, mm-hmm. a little bit more in depth. What's it like being in that position of documenting everything that you've gone through? I feel like. Like, I haven't documented enough. I feel like people want more because some people don't even know I have children. They're like, you have, you got kids? Yes, I take my kids to camp every morning. I show them my story. Like, we walk to school every morning and stuff. And um, I feel like people want to see a little bit more of that. They don't know that I'm engaged and they want to know more about, you know, my relationship. I've been with the same person since high school, since 10th grade. So they're like, I want to know about him and all of that. But those type of things, I just kind of keep to myself. But it's really fun. It's just fun. Like, even still, I'll go back sometimes and watch, like, the first episode. Like, look at me. Like, (laughs) I was just out here, like, just doing this thing. So it's fun. (laughs) So recently, you just did a pretty big showcase out in Philly. And the reason why I say it was pretty big just because of all the energy and promotion that you put into it. Like you were literally in the street, you know, handing out flyers, you know, right. making sure that people knew about the show, constantly promoting, constantly talking about it, taking people on the journey, you know, to make sure that people know that this event was coming up. What was it about this specific event? Cause you've done a plethora of shows, mm-hmm. you know, what was it about this event in particular that made you just go so hard in every aspect? Cause I, fi- I finally had a stage that was big enough to handle all this ass. Say like, no, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. The TLA in Philly, the TLA is it is it, it. It's it. It's the biggest stage in the city next to the Fillmore. So it's like you did it. Like Nipsey's touched that stage. Meek has touched that stage. Like so many people that I look up to has been there. It's like the equivalent Jets. of what Webster Hall is here. Yeah. So it was like yeah, I, I had to go in. I had to. I had to turn up. Like and the way that the opportunity fell into my lap was just, just so divine. It was just crazy. So I was like, because I appreciate this opportunity, I have to prove it. Like I have to prove. I, it's it's time to prove myself. I said I'm gonna go on the stage. I'm gonna let it all out. It, either they gonna eat it up or they ain't gonna fuck with me. But they gonna get it. They gonna get all of it. And I feel like people eating it up, like the whole meal, dessert, they drinking, they got cake, everything. They ate it. It's a whole buffet kind of deal. But now, what? We're gonna have fun. <laughs> yes. Ladies and gentlemen, back for another interview. I know you guys haven't seen this in a while. We have the mythical, magical, mysterious, pop dust, magic box. Now, Tanya, this is how this is gonna work. I'm gonna shake this up. We're gonna give you three questions. Okay. I'm gonna shake this up. You're gonna reach your hand in. You're gonna pull out a question and you're gonna answer said question no matter how embarrassing or incriminating it may be. So Scoop, get the bail money ready. Um, (laughs) You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. Name one actual word in the lyrics of Umbop by Hanson. That you can't. Do. (laughs) That is a lyric. That's a lyric. You're probably the only person smart enough to pick that up. 
We didn't say it had to be a full line. We said, said a lyric. Word, and I just went away. You said a lyric. That word. counts. That counts. <laughs> All right. Question number two. If you had to get a brand logo tattooed on your body, what logo would you choose? I have an ox tattooed on me and an eye of rod. Like, I like symbols and stuff. I really don't know if I would do a logo because it's like, y'all got to pay me. So you want to get the Pornhub logo given the nah. fact that it kind of inspired your, your ad lib? No. No? They got they really would have to pay they would have to pay me a lot. That's a bag right there. That's a big bag. That's but a big bag. I think they, they can swing it, though. <laughs> that advertisement pays for itself. Okay. <laughs> Bang. If you and I were to have an intimate... Who is I? You? Who's I don't write these questions. Who, okay, so who's I? So this... So that's a full argument say, let's wear? say it is me. I would make you a sandwich and I'll wear what I got on right now, some jeans, a shirt, something like that. You got me a sandwich, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like what? I only make hot meals for niggas that pay bills. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, this money is pretty lucrative though, so. <laughs> well, you ain't paying my bills. If you pay my bills, you get a hot meal. Fair enough. Or you get a sandwich, nigga. I mean, <laughs> you know what? Could be a hot sandwich. You know what? In all fairness, you know what? You're absolutely right. So bro. next month, you send me your Netflix bill. I'll pay it. <laughs> I'll do it. We can we can, we can upgrade that sandwich to a cheese I think steak. I'm still using my sister, John, like her Logan. <laughs> Yo, shout out to everybody who doesn't have their own Netflix account. Shout you guys out to you, MVP. MVP. <laughs> all right, one more. All right, one more. One more. Is it true? What? Yes. True? Everything you hear about me is fucking true. There you go. Whatever it is, I don't give a fuck, it's true. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Tynira Da Vinci one time. <laughs> Lions Den will be out August 6th. I'm your host, Deesa. This has been another Pop Dust exclusive, and we will see you soon. Peace. Yo, yo, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like it, subscribe to our channel and click the little bell to be notified of brand new content. And also, make sure you visit our website, popthis.com, and follow us on all social media at popthis. We will see you soon. Peace.